get a, another intake mailed to us. Hey, Shorty, come take a look at this. What you got there? We got a package mailed to us. It's got a little damage here. <laughs> and just a little bit more damage on this side. Oh, man. Oh, boy, Mike don't want to see that. Let me yeah, go get him. Definitely Mike's going to want to see that. Oh, yeah, let me go get it. You better call the customer. <laughs> oh, that's f***ing nice. Uh, that's United States Postal Service at its best. Well, this customer wants it hydro dipped in a direct port kit installed, so let's go. You don't even need a razor knife. <laughs> it's lucky it even made it here. Oh my god. Yeah, we can take care of it's that. Not, it's not hurt, is it? No, it doesn't look like it. All right, I'll let him know how it came, but uh, he's lucky. Yeah, he wants the hydro dip and then a 90 degree fogger installed in it. All right, we'll take care of it. All right, cool. Sounds good. Okay, I'm finished priming the intake. Um, the next step is to put it on my table, um, sand it down nice and smooth, and get it ready for the base coat. Okay, um, I have the intake on my table. Uh, what I need to do now is sand it down and get it nice and smooth. Uh, I'm gonna just try this little spot right here for, you know, just to give you an example. If you hear it, before I sand it, you hear it kind of rough feel sounding. Take the sandpaper. Listen to the difference. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And I do the a whole I do the whole intake like that, and then I'm just ready for to put the base coat on it. Okay, I'm finished sanding the intake. Um, the next step I need to do is uh, put the black base coat on it and get it ready for hydro dipping. Okay, another day, another dollar. This is how the intake looks. After I um, put the black base coat on it, next step is to bring it over to the dipping tank and hydro dip it. Okay, um, this is how the intake look um, after it's been hydro dipped, dried overnight, and next thing I have to do is put a click coat on it. Alright, we got the intake back from Shorty. We need to put the nozzles in the intake. First off, we start with putting liquid Teflon paste on the threads. Push it into the threads, wipe off the excess, and we thread it in. Move on to the next one. Leaving them loose because I'm going to go ahead and uh, flow it with the compressed air real quick. Get them going in a general direction. And then later on we'll flow it again with nitrous in it. Alright, now we got the uh, nozzles in. We put a jet in the nitrous side of the nozzle. We're going to flow it with compressed air. Just to make sure we got it going in the right direction. And just rotate it until it stops. Like that, and we move on to the next one. All right, the nozzles are in, the jets are in. Now's the time to start bending the uh, tubing. We're going to start with the fuel side since it's the first one right here. 
You can also use the tubing bender and your sticks of tubing that you buy with the kit that you get from us. Tubing bender you get from any parts catalog that sells performance parts. So I'll have them in there. About $35. All right, you're gonna stick your tubing in there. Run it all the way down to the bend. You're gonna get, since we need 290, just gonna get you a quick 90 right here. You're gonna insert your tubing into the bender. Butt it all the way up against the wheels. Grab it as close as you can to the bender to get a close radius. You're gonna bend it. All right, we got our uh, two, two 90s bent for fuel. I'm getting ready to show you where they're gonna go. We're gonna thread them onto here to the two closest ones in the center of the runner. Just like that. Your fuel solenoid. You're gonna to wanna to mark your tubing to where the fuel, the tubing goes in behind this thread, the last thread right there on all of them. That way it gives you plenty of room for your compression sleeve to seal on the nut. What you do is you just get you a basic idea of where you want it. Get you a pin, mark where the threads are for that side of the tubing, like that. Like that. Next thing you're gonna need is your tubing cutter. You get it from any hardware store. They're fairly cheap. Anybody has them. You'll just take your steel tubing, open your cutter up, put it on your mark, and you just twist away on the tubing and twist your nut every turn until it cuts through the tubing. It'll take a few minutes to, a few turns I mean, to get through it. It is stainless steel tubing. For that end right there, you want to get a reamer bit. You can pick it up any hardware store. And just open the hole up because you squeezed. I don't know if you can see that, but you squeeze the diameter closed. That's what it should look like. Just ream it. And it's ready. You're gonna slide your nut over that, your compression sleeve. It's gonna go on there like that. Put it on here. Just let it hang there and go cut your next piece and after that you just tighten your nuts down and it'll hold it up. Alright, we get the phone call all the time. How can you tell the difference between a nitrous solenoid and a fuel solenoid? The fuel solenoids, they have red wires on them. There's a label on there that says fuel on it. The nitrous solenoids, they come with black wires and there's a label on there that says N2O, which means nitrous. Alright, we got three nozzles plumbed already. Three 90s on them. The last uh, 90 I just did is slightly taller. We're gonna show you that real quick on how uh, we came up with the uh, measurement on how to do the 90 and get it to line up. Take your uh, brand new piece of tubing, put it on your fuel nozzle, on the full side of your nozzle. Take another straight piece of tubing, put it in the fitting. Just get it to where it's kind of straight. It makes, you want it to make a straight line this way. Where they intersect, you're going to mark it. All right, just like it's marked. Like Once it's marked, I like to mark them all the way around. Because you can see all the way around where your mark is. You're going to take your tubing bender. Once again, any high performance parts catalog, tubing bender. You want your mark to fall 
in the middle of the 90. It may take you a couple bins to get it right. Line it up where you think it's going to be and marks in the middle of the 90 there as you can see. A little bit of luck, it's going to line up with it. Fit in there and we're off. All right, we got our fuel all plumbed up and everything. We got a carburetor on there to check for uh, clearance on all the linkage and mechanical secondaries and everything going on. We're going to take the fuel solenoids off, show you where we're at with the nitrous. We got it tucked up under the carburetor so it doesn't interfere with anything. We're also remote, remotely mounting a uh, solenoid for the nitrous. We'll show you how we did that at the end of the video when we go to flow the intake. Uh, to start with your 90, you're going to use the same short 290s that you started with on your fuel. Those are going to go for your nitrous also. They'll run to the top of the distribution block. When you're done, you're going to have a, about a 150 degree radius here. Run into the, the fitting just below your top fitting there. That is done with the uh, tool you get from your catalog, high perform any high performance catalog. It, it will do it. It just takes you a little time, a little practice to get it done. When it's done, it will look like this. When you get it right, you'll be able to put it in the block, make your connection, line your jets up, and tighten everything down. And that side is ready to rock and roll. All right, one last thing. Remote mounted nitrous solenoid. It's got a T to one solenoid. Goes to the distribution blocks with a hose on each side and a fitting that goes into the distribution blocks. That's remote mounted. We got the small block forward intake plumbed with the nitrous lines and the fuel lines on both sides. Now we're ready to flow it, make sure we got no anomalies coming out of the runners with nitrous pressure. After that, we won't show it on screen, but we're going to flow it per pound to see what it does per hour and do some jetting. Got the jets here ready to go for the intake. 200 horsepower and a couple other jets for them to tune and uh, box it up and get it out the door before Mike finds out. Well, what, what the f are you doing with the intake on the table? Uh, Stop all this f videotape and bullshit. Get the fucking intake in the box and get it out the door. The guy is going to freaking blow my phone up. It was supposed to be shipped yesterday. Yesterday, not today. We'll what are y'all doing with this bullshit video? We'll get it here. We got enough just videos. Just, we don't need no Mike, more Mike, videos. Mike, 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 Mike. Just, yeah. just go inside. We're going to get this shit handled. Everybody go on, go on inside. They, they get upset if it doesn't get out the door and y'all putting pressure on me. I'm going to have to go drinking. Uh, go blah, blah, blah. Just go inside. We're going to handle this shit.